Ellis at the RSPB. Um, so I'm on the conservation data team and one of our big pro projects at the moment is redeveloping our internal GIS system and that's what I'm going to tell you about today. So what I'm like so to give a brief overview, um, basically what I want to do is quickly introduce RSPB so you understand what we do and therefore how and why we're using maps. And then I'll introduce you to Merlin, which is the, our internal GIS system. And then I'll spend most of the talk going through um, some screenshots from Merlin giving examples of how we're using mapping. So RSPB, um, we're the UK's largest conservation charity. Um, our current tagline is giving nature a home, which is really all about how um, we have kind of a complete ecosystem approach that you can't have um, a healthy individual species without having a healthy habitat for it to live in and a healthy food supply um, for, for its survival. And what we're trying to do is get as many people as possible um, caring about wildlife and provi providing homes for wildlife. Um, I think one of the things that perhaps we're no most known for is our network of nature reserves. We have over 200 nature reserves throughout the UK. So I just wanted to go through um, kind of an overview of some of the different things we do, so to kind of contextualise um, the different ways that we're using maps. So we do a lot of monitoring work, so it's going out doing surveys primarily of birds, but a variety of different species, um, of invertebrates, mammals, amphibians, reptiles. We also do a lot of hab habitat monitoring. And a lot of that monitoring work feeds into um, research. Um, we have research scientists who are trying to understand causes of um, population declines and come up with ideas for um, stabilising and helping the, the um, recovery. We have land managers um, who are working on our reserves, so wardens on our reserves. Um, both making the, the land good for the wildlife but also trialling management of new ideas that might benefit wildlife. Um, we have advisors who advise external um, landowners on how they could perhaps um, do, like, manage their, their land for, for wildlife. We do habitat restoration, particularly peatlands, um, wetlands. Um, we have conservation um, with casework officers who get involved in planning applications and give advice um, to minimise the impact of planning applications. Um, investigations team who look at wildlife crime, um, are involved in advocacy, taking all of these ideas um, towards policy makers and also in education, encouraging children to um, get out and enjoy the wildlife. And most of these different areas we're, we're using mapping for. So now I'll go on to, to introduce Merlin, our, um, our GIS system. So like I said, Merlin is, it's our, it's our in-house GIS system. Um, it's been built as a bespoke system by um, developers at RSPB. And kind of it's a mapping system that sits on top of a, a huge database of records that you can access through the, the mapping interface. Um, the, and the database holds um, record of species um, records from our monitoring, um, casework records from cases we've been involved with and um, uh, investigations data. So the Merlin system that we have now was launched in November of last year, so not all that long ago. Um, and we're part way through a redevelopment project. We still have another couple of years of development time to keep working on it and expand it further to other areas within RSPB. 
There were a couple of geeky slides made by some of my colleagues. This first one was like a very simple overview of the, um, the schematics of the Merlin system. So the big tin at the bottom represents the database um, SQL server, and then we're also streaming as much as possible open data um, from external sources through um, web map services. Um, so we do have OpenStreetMap as a base layer available on Merlin. Um, so all of this kind of comes together um, at the mapping interface, which we've built based on um, ArcGIS with Silverlight to make the, the map sort of nice and whizzy. Um, the second slide is a bit busy, but all I really wanted to show here is just kind of um, so these are used statistics. And the, right now, the, the top left um, chart show we're averaging about 60 unique users <coughs> every day, which we're really, really happy about. 80 unique users, not 60. Um, yeah. So now I'll move on to, to actually show you Merlin and show you the interesting stuff. So the, the system is accessed through our intranet. So everyone with an RSPB user account and access to our network can access the system. Um, and when you go into to Merlin, this is the homepage you arrive at. Um, and mostly, I think, people go into the mapping module, which is available through the top section. Um, so, kind of what I wanted to show you now is it will be nine different features within Merlin, um, a series of, of screenshots, um, and yeah, just show you some of the, the things that I think are pretty cool. So, um, the, the first thing is the, the data set tree. This is uh, in the bottom left hand corner of the screen over here, and it's a list of over 100 preloaded layers um, that you can just click on and add straight into the map. So these are layers that um, people find particularly useful have asked um, to be on the, the data set tree. So in this map I'm showing the reserve network and national parks, but we also have um, protected land, um, archaeology, schools, land bureaus, all kinds of different things that people are interested. So <coughs> locating places. Um, this is very similar to what you'd see in any kind of um, web-based mapping system, a place search, but because we've designed it um, for, for our use, we've made it more bespoke, more tailored to, to our own uses. So in addition to all the place names from the Gazetteer marked with pins, the RSPB reserves will show up with the RSPB logo. Um, another feature that we've added for facilitating location searches is the grid reference tool that shows over to the left hand side and that lets you click anywhere on the map and almost instantaneously get the grid reference at a variety of different resolutions, um, the easting and the northing, Latin long postcode. Um, yeah, and then if you click on any of the, the items that show up on your location search, um, the, the map window zooms into that location. So we also have um, reserve areas available on the data set tree. So with a single click, you can add in high resolution areas for the reserve network, which is very useful for the, the reserve wardens um, who are looking into management options for the reserve. So, um, the next example I'll talk about is casework, adding case data um, into the system, or adding, add, adding it onto your map. So, in the same kind of way you can search for a place name, you can search for a case that we've been involved with. Um, you get a list of your search results and then you can click on those 
to add them into the map. And when you click to add it into the map, um, you zoom into the case area and get details of the case. So as I mentioned before, the, the cases um, are uh, the, the casework we do is um, it's related to planning proposals that are put forward and um, our casework officers give advice on how to minimise the environmental impact of development. So this one in particular from about 10 years ago uh, is a wind farm application to which we have recommended a series of breeding bird surveys before and after the, the extension was built. <coughs> so that was looking for case data that had been stored in the Merlin database behind the, the mapping interface. There's also a lot of species data in the database that you can access through the map. Um, and in this example, I'm showing swift data. So um, what I've done is query for swift and brought back a, the <coughs> data sets um, that contain swift data. Um, so this is quite interesting. It's all um, kind of crowdsourced data. The, the swift inventory that, that I've added onto the map, um, all of these records have been submitted by the public through our website. Um, so when you query for a data set, you can add the data onto the map, but you can also access um, just from this kind of like a page icon next to the data set name that will bring you up the, the metadata from the data set on the right hand side. So that's a description of the data set that um, will let you know exactly what it is and whether it's useful to you. And the final thing I'm showing you is just that whenever you add data into your map window, you also have access to the attribute table with all of the information for the records that you've added onto your map. Oh yeah, and I thought it would be interesting to zoom into this area and see if we have any swift nest sites reported in this <coughs> couple of them just down the road from here. So, printing. When you've made a map that you think is really nice, you can go ahead and um, print a copy, not necessarily print it to paper, but just like kind of make PDFs or JPEGs or um, whatever you fancy. So I had been using for the previous example the OpenStreetMap layer, but I found that I was struggling to print it last night, so I switched to, switch to a different base layer for this example. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but this basically a, a number of um, pre-designed layouts um, for, for printing out maps um, and you have control over what goes on your map on the left hand panel you draw this red box around the map area you want to print and quite simply you can um, create a map it takes a couple of minutes So digitising within Merlin, the users have uh, the ability to create their own layers, um, create common points, um, line layers with up to 10 attributes. Um, I'll come back to this in a moment. Because um, what I want to mention first is project sharing. So when you've created a map layout that you're happy with, you can save it as a project so you can come back to that. But there's additional features um, associated with your project. So you can also um, share the project with anyone else who has access to Merlin. Um, you both have editing rights to the project, so it's good for collaboration, particularly with people that um, we're not at the same location as. Um, yeah, so to, to, so to share a project, you just select a project that you've saved, um, and it pops up this window where you can select the person that you want to share it with. Um, but returning to, or bringing together digitizing and sharing projects, 
This is a project that was shared with me yesterday by one of my colleagues, Alice, who works in education. Um, and she created this map of all of the locations in the last year where we've done um, field teaching and outreach. So, the very last thing I wanted to talk about is kind of um, applications of mapping. So, we can also run dynamic reports based on uh, geographic data that we hold in the database. And the, the example I'm going to show you is um, based on corn crate data that we've collected. So we monitor most of the, the majority of the UK population of corn crates. Mostly they occur in the Western Isles. Um, and just with a couple of clicks, Merlin can produce you a report with a graph like this. That um, this graph showing the corn crates, so this is the population of breeding male corn crates in 2012 at all the different locations that we were surveying. And then if you click on any individual column within that chart, you can pop up a second graph that will show the, the trend over time for the duration of um, the time that we've been monitoring the corn crates. So this is on Ireland, you can see a nice um, increase in the population over the last um, 20 years. Um, and with that, I'd like to thank everyone for listening and we have to answer any questions.
more people being able to put data into the system, particularly into the database, I think we have to make sure that we have measures in place to ensure data quality for what goes on to the database. But we're not quite at that step yet where we're encouraging people to put in data into the database largely because we don't have those protocols in place. Did you have something? Yeah, um, I presume you looked at the available uh, options in terms of existing GIS systems to see what would fit your needs. Um, I think you didn't find anything that matched what you wanted uh, to do. And, uh, is that the case? Yeah, I mean, that's not something I've been directly involved with, but um, I definitely the team had quite specific requirements I think based on like, what, what we would like to do uh, with the amount with the ways in which we'd like to be able to tailor what we have to um, to the star. Uh, about 15 years ago SNH did a similar exercise and uh, they sent a whole lot of people to the university to get training in how to use GIS and I'm interested in whether the RSPB has had to provide some form of way of training so that people in the outstations can utilize the technology because many of them would be resistant to it. And so I wonder how you overcome that resistance and how you manage to train up or whether that was not really an issue. Well, we have actually had quite a big push and when, when the system first went live, um, people from our team visited all of the, the main work centers, so the, the big reserves, all of the offices that we have around the UK. Um, and at that point it was really just a familiarisation, like an hour session that we are trying to encourage people to come into to just get confidence to explore the system. Um, so now we're running um, longer courses, like half day and full day courses, to, yeah, for people who have more of um, an interest or a need. So for particular areas like the, the casework, for example, it, it is a requirement that all the data, the case of data are re reported on Berlin because that's how we monitor and report on our in involvement. So in areas like that, there, there's already been big buy-in because those guys are using the previous system and the new system is just so much easier to use that, um, that that's not been too difficult. I think where we're wanting to branch out with the development over the next couple of years particularly into capturing more of the advisory work and um, some of the, the locations on reserve, so we want to be able to measure or to, to monitor hazardous areas on reserves. Um, I, yeah, I think that would be a challenge perhaps to, to get everyone to buy into it and I'm, I'm not entirely sure yet how we will overcome that. Thank you very much.